Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-Level Further Maths. Here we're looking at composite volumes of revolution. So what that means is that to work out the answer to these sorts of questions involving volume of revolution, there are going to be multiple parts to the problem. Uh, and we're going to be answering questions from exercise 5c here. So we're going to be looking at two questions specifically in this video, one where we break a, break a volume up into two separate parts. And in the second question, we're going to be looking at how we need to do one volume, subtract another volume to get the exact volume that we're looking for. And you can also use a few little shortcuts when doing these questions as well. Remember that some types of volume of revolution can just be cylinders if the equation of the line is just horizontally straight, if you're revolving in the x-axis, obviously. Um, if you revolve this in the x-axis this way, um, or the or, the other way around, um, horizontally, um, you're just going to get a cylinder. You can see here that if we were to add lines on that end, then when it revolves around, you're just going to get a simple cylinder. You'll have the height, which is effectively a difference in the x-coordinates, and the radius of your um, cylinder is going to be whatever y-coordinate you get up to. So try and visualise these problems as best as possible because you can use these shortcuts and it will save you time. In addition, there's a cone that you could use here. And remember, the volume of a cone is a third pi r squared h. r represents the, um, the radius at the bottom of the cone, where the circle is, and the height represents the perpendicular height of the cone. So if we were to have this equation here, and it was revolving around the x-axis, then what we would have, you can see it appear here, not the most symmetrical of problems, I obviously admit, but you'll see here you'll have a, a cone appear here, your height will be the x-axis dimension, and your radius will be the difference from the zero point out to your y-coordinate. Okay, so the, or the other way around, depending on which way you've revolved around, uh, we're considering it this way around, okay? So your radius, try and visualize it as best as possible. It does depend on which way you're rotating around, um, but this here will be the radius and this here will be the height when you're revolving around the x-axis. So try and look out for those two shortcuts. It is gonna make life a lot more easier. Now in this first question here, we see that the region R is, defounded, um, is bounded by um, the equation y equals x cubed plus two which looks a little bit like that, the x squared, x cubed graph shifted up by 2, and 5 minus 2x, so put a little marker at 5, and a negative gradient of 2x. Part A is verify that the coordinates of A are 1, 3. Well, the coordinate A is, um, is where the, the two points will intersect. So all we have to do is substitute in 1 into each of the equations, and then hopefully three comes out the other end. So substituting in one into the first equation, we get three. Substituting one into the second equation, we get three as well. Great. So we have verified there that when you substitute in x equals one, you get y equals three on both graphs, so they clearly intersect that point. Part B is to now find a solid that is created by revolving 360 degrees around the x-axis. Find the volume of this solid. So both of these graphs now are going to revolve around the x-axis um, to form a solid volume. So we're going to split this question up into two separate parts. We're going to integrate between 0 to 1 of this curve here. Now it is a curve, so the only way we can do this sort of question here is by integration. But we can see here that the second part of the um, curve here that has a boundary at 2.5 can be represented by a cone where the radius of the cone is going to be 3 because that is the height effectively of the graph at that point and it will circle around there. Remember the volume for a height is a third pi r squared h. I remember it as a third because you're working in three dimensions, it's effectively a three-dimensional triangle, okay, with a circle at the bottom. Okay, so we're going to split this up into R1 and R2 to make a combined region R. 
The first one is um, pi times the integral from b to a, which is 1 to 0, of y squared. y is uh, x cubed plus 2 here. So substitute those values in. Expand your brackets first. Expand the square of that bracket there. Um, apply your integration. So x to the 7 plus x to the 4 um, plus 4x. Integrate between 1 and 0. And we get an answer here of 36 pi over 7. Okay, so that's the area of R1. That's fairly straightforward. The area of the volume for revolution 2 could be constructed by a, um, a cone. So let's do it that way. Volume equals a third pi r squared h. So apply your dimensions in there. So the height of this cone is going to be 1.5 because it goes from 1 to 2.5 and the radius of this cone is going to be 3 because it's going to revolve around this way. So you'll effectively have a cone that looks like this. Always try and visualise the problem. And here we get v equals 9 pi over 2. And the final question here is to just add these two volumes together to get the total volume and here we clearly get 135 pi over 14. Okay. So a classic type of problem here where we've split the, split the question into one part that requires um, integration, one part that requires um, a cone or a cylinder. Uh, it could also involve integration as well. There's no reason why the second region can't be integrated as well. It's just slightly easier if you do it by the cone method where you can observe it um, and calculate it a bit quicker. Right, here's the second question then where we have to do one region subtract another. We have two equations here, square root of x and 1 over 8x and we're revolving around the x-axis. So we're revolving this shape around the x-axis like this, that this should be a bit closer in there. Okay, so we're going to have a volume that's created here um, and it's only going to be this part here that's going to be revolved around the x-axis here. Okay, so uh, what's, what we're going to do here then is we're going to just check and find the point of intersection first because that's going to be really important um, for our boundary. We've got already got a boundary of 1, so we're expecting a boundary of in between 0 and 1. Let's times up by x. Raise each side to the power of 2 thirds, so we're going to cube root the um, 1 over 8 and then square it. So we're going to get x equals a quarter. Okay, so now that we've got the boundary of x equals a quarter, the way that we're going to think about this problem here is that we're going to revolve the whole area first, the whole area underneath the red line that is the square root of x, work out that region when it's revolved around, and then we're going to subtract this little region down here that's underneath the 1 over 8x and that's going to then find us the region once we've done the subtraction of just this region up here um, rotated around by 360 degrees. Okay so in this question here it's a question where we have to do one region subtract another region to give us just this floating region in midair there. So uh, one sneaky way that you can do this, um, although uh, it would be probably my personal preference not to do it this way and just to work out the two regions separately, but you can certainly do it this way. Um, because the limits are the same, we can do the subtraction uh, before any of the integrating. So we can do y2 squared minus y1 squared, um, y, y2 first because y2 will be... Um, the bigger value here. So y2 is this second curve here, y1 is this curve here. Um, so we're going to be squaring the square root of x and squaring 1 over 8x and then we're going to subtract one um, equation from another and we're, bind we're, bound we're binding in between 1 and a quarter here. 
So the subtraction here is x minus 1 over 64x squared. And then we will integrate it. Probably the best way of integrating 1 over 64 is to think about it. 1 over 64x to the minus 2. Increase the power by 1, divide by the new power. So the new power is going to be minus 1. Divide by the new power. Dividing by minus 1 is the same as timesing by minus 1. So it's minus 1 over 64. But given there's a minus there already, it's a double negative. So it makes this positive x becomes x squared, but then divide by 2, so half x squared. And then all that's left for us to do then is substitute between the boundaries. And we get v equals 27 pi over 64. Okay, so what's really important with this problem here is not necessarily the maths that's involved here. It's your ability to visualize how am I going to get this volume here rotating around the x-axis on its own. I need to do one volume here, the bigger volume that I'm showing you now, take away the volume bit that I don't need and that will leave me just with this region here. So it's a subtraction problem here. The first question that we worked in was an addition problem. Alright, so your turn to have a go at this question here then. We have a Question here where you need to divide it up into two separate areas. Right, pause the video and try your best. Right then, let's have a go at um, this question here then. So part A asks for us to verify coordinates 2, 8. So hopefully this was fairly straightforward for most of you. So substitute x equals 2 into both of these two equations, and hopefully both y coordinates come out to be 8. So it's going to be a half of 2 squared um, times 4. So that's 4 squared, that's 16. So y is equal to 8 here, so that's the first equation. And when we substitute in x equals 2, we're going to get 16 minus 4 times 2, which will also give us 8. So there we are. We have verified there. That the x, the coordinate of intersection A is at 2, 8. What also might be useful is to find out where this point is. That would just be by setting the y coordinate equal to 0. So that'll make it 16 minus 4x equals 0. So x is obviously 4. Okay, so 4 is the marker here and 2 is the marker here. And it obviously goes through 0 as well. We can tell that from the equation there. Right, so let's clear the space a little bit then. So what was important from what we worked out previously, we had a marker of 2 here, a marker of 4 here, and now we're asked to find the volume of revolution around the x-axis. Now the first thing for us to do is to work out region 1, which is this part here I'm going to define. You can define it what you want. It could be capital X and capital Y. You give a label to it, but clearly label it on your diagram and clearly label it in your working. So we're integrating between 2 to 0 times by pi, and the equation is going to be 1 quarter x to the 4x plus 2 squared dx. Now let's, um, let's try and simplify this a bit further. So from 2 to 0, it's going to be a quarter x to the 6 once we've expanded the brackets. Then it's going to be x to the 4 Five, the quarter will drop because there'll be four lots of these inside the bracket and it's also going to be x to the 4 um, dx because when we expand the brackets we're going to get a 4 at the end there um, so now it's time to um, integrate so it's going to be 1 over 6 times 4 is um, 24 um, and then it's going to be x to the 7. No, it's not going to be 24, is it? It's going to be 28. Because it'll be 4 times 7 on the bottom there. So 1 over 28, x to the 7, plus 1 over 6, x to the 6, plus 1 over 5, x to the 5. And this is all going to be in between 2 and 0. So grabbing your calculator and substituting in the value of 2 and subtracting the value of 0 substituted in, and we get 
2,272 pi over 105. Great, so that's R1. What we need to do now is work out R2. We can use a little bit of a clever shortcut here because we can clearly visualize that this here is going to be a cone. It's going to be a straight line down. The axis, um, the, the radius here is going to be third pi is going to be eight. That's the height of the curve here. So it's going to be half of eight squared times by the height of the uh, cone here, which is going to be two. So typing that into your calculator and you get uh, third pi times 64 times two, which is 128 pi over three. And then the final question here is to add the two areas together. So R1 plus R2. Um, and we get um, 6,752 over 105 pi. Great, fantastic. So that is the combined volume of the solid here um, that's formed by this shape here. Right, so that was, a, that was a difficult question. Lots of different parts there, but it's not the most difficult problem within this exercise 5C. Hunt down the most difficult questions. Have a go at those to make sure you're as best as you possibly can be at these types of volumes of revolution questions. They always involve multiple parts and they generally involve a context as well that we're going to see in the next video. So don't be satisfied that you're good at the easy ones. Challenge yourself on the difficult ones as well because they're more likely actually to appear. Right, thanks for watching.